Thanks for Okay. I'm Alan Brzezinski, commander of Post 72 Armory Hackett in Soviet East New York. It's March 20th, uh, 2005, and we have. Lou Hanukkah. Okay. Uh, Lou, I want to find out were you, uh, were you drafted or did you enlist? I enlisted. And where were you living at the time? I was living in Manhattan. I went to work and was going to graduate in June of 49. And uh, all the recruiters from the armed forces came aboard, uh, into the school and gave us their spiel. And it, it sounds funny, but uh, I was in the old National Guard back in 46. And the first year in the National Guard, we went to Camp Smith in Pigskill, New York. And it's, uh, mosquitoes hate us a lot. <laughs> So the second time we went to Camp Ed uh, Fort Edwards out in Cape Cod, sand fleas got us. I'm just giving you a little background why I, I joined what I did. Uh, on the third time, we went up to Camp Drum up by Watertown in October, and then the snow was up to our kneecaps, and we went out in bivouac. So to get back to the recruiters coming to the high schools, there was the Army, the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Air Force, and the Coast Guard. Each one gave us their spiel, telling us what was going on and everything. So what happens is, after everybody got done, the Navy got up there, and he says, all you got to do, fellas, is listen to what I'm going to say. He says, think of this. He says, you're going to have three hot meals a day. You're going to have a warm bed at night. I said, you got me, because all that sand fleas and all that crap came back. So I joined the Navy. I graduated at the end of June of 49, about a week or 10 days later I was in Great Lakes, Illinois for boot camp. We went to work and spent to about seven days on a train. It was the old coach cars. There's no dining room, no nothing, no showers. So you have some idea of what we looked like when we got, finally got to Great Lakes. We left New York, we went to Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, into Ohio, into Indiana, picking up recruits along the way. The only time we got any food is when we stopped in some train station and people would come out and give us sandwiches or sodas. So you have some idea of what we looked like when we got the Great Lakes. We hadn't showered, shaved, changed clothes. And we got out there about 5 o'clock in the morning, and his chief comes out there screaming his bloody lungs off. We figured he's going to take us over to the barracks so we can get a shower and a shave. No such luck. He had us do double time to the barracks. We dropped our clothes. We ran to sick bay to get our examinations. And I don't know why the smell didn't kill them, but we got in there and they started giving us the medical and everything. Then they ran us over to supply got us some dungarees and clean shirts, gave us a chance to grab a shower and shave. Everything was done double time. Mm. Then we finally got to the mess hall. When we got to the mess hall, got some chow. It didn't make no difference what it was, it was warm. And 12 weeks, we were in boot camp. We went to work and did everything. We learned about seamanship, military discipline, the other thing was in the barracks, it was 125 of us in the barracks. And we go to work and get in there. Finally, that first night, we were just exhausted. We fell down, went to sleep. About 4 o'clock the next morning, it sounded like the world came to an end. This chief came in with a GI can with a nightstick running around the middle of it. And he told us we had 10 minutes to get shave, shower, outside. We get out there and we do double time to the mess hall. And this procedure is continued for 12 weeks. And <clears throat> eventually, after about, I say, three or four weeks, we learned that what it was all about. It was discipline, timing, learning seamanship, all about the military. And another thing was the first night there, I'm just thinking about it, after the lights went out, the last thing the chief said to us is, I don't want nobody crying for their mommy. And 
and it's dead silence because we're just tired. And all of a sudden, you hear a little sniffle down one end of the barracks. And like a set of dominoes, three or four guys, I want my mommy, I want to go home. And it was a funny story. But I learned. It, it was a great life. I mean, I really enjoyed it. You went in boot camp when? In the winter time? Or was it? We went in in July. So we were there for July, August, and September. Graduated in boot camp about the end or middle of September. My assignment, but we got 10 days leave. And then after we got the leave, we came back and we got our orders. And I went down to Norfolk, Norfolk, Virginia. And I don't know if it wants to be on tape, but they used to call it Shyster City. Yeah, uh, you've heard that. And yes. never being out of New York before, it was a whole new experience. I was the reporter board of CVE, which is a very flat town. 120 was a hull number. And we'd go to work at first cruise. We went and spent three months in the Arctic Circle. No liberty, just floating around watching icebergs go by. <laughs> and uh, we go to work and we have what we call GQ, General Quarters. We practice like we were under attack. And the planes would go work and make qualifying flights on the day hours. And then they would have to qualify at night, the same thing. So we get back to Norfolk about three months later. It was unbelievable. I think I was drunk for the weekend because we didn't have nothing for the three months. And then we found Old timers will tell you this. We go to work and we found signs on people's lawn. As I said, sailors and dogs keep off. So that was welcome to Norfolk. You, did you, you didn't go to a, a class A school for, uh, did you become a cook? You, did you strike for it? I went to work and when I went aboard ship, I was a yeoman. I was in the office and uh, I've had I started working in the pastry shops when I was eight, nine years old, and cooking at eight, nine years old. So when I come back from Norfolk, from the Arctic Circle, I was going through brochures and stuff, and there was an opening for a ship's cook. Mm -hmm. And I went to work and put in for that, and I got that, and we, I went up to Bayonne, New Jersey, and from that day forward, I was a ship's cook. You served during the time there after your career? Uh, I served Vietnam. during career. During, during career. 49. <coughs> right. I went to work and uh, career come along in 1950. Mm -hmm. And that was when I swapped ships for a guy because the Mindanero was supposed to go to Korea. Mm -hmm. And this guy was going through a brutal divorce, so he wanted to get away from Norfolk. Come over to my ship, and he says, The Mindanao is going to Korea. I'm on the Sicily, which is another flat top. And he goes to work and he says, Would you swap with me? And I said, I don't care. It don't make no difference to me. He just wanted to get out of the Norfolk. So we swap. Mutual, right? Yeah. I went to your ship, got it approved by your CO, my CO approved it. So what happens is he gets on the Mindanao, which is due for, to go to Korea. Mm -hmm. The Sicily is supposed to stay in Norfolk. It didn't work that way. Usually doesn't. The Mindanao stayed in Norfolk, and the Sicily went to Korea. So I was over there from uh, about 50 to 51 in that era. In 52, my time was up because I had signed up for a three-year hitch. In Korea, they flew me off to Sicily, back to Norfolk, for discharge. I get all processed for discharge. All I had to do was go topside and get my pay. Goodbye. I go up topside and get my pay. Man tells me he's gonna give me another year. Mr. Truman, our honorable president, mm -hmm. gave all servicemen at that time. Another year. So I figured I'd spend another year in Norfolk. Didn't work that way. They put me on a plane, flew me all the way back to Korea for the Sicily. 
So when we come back from Norfolk, we went to work and came back, oh, I guess at the end of 52. So we get back there, and uh, I spent uh, another year there, took the 53, and then I started moving around. I did a, got off the CDEs, I did a cruiser, and then uh, I believe the Jersey was in the water at that time. I did a little bit on Jersey. My time, I re-enlisted, and uh, I went to work and got out in January 60. So, and prior to getting out, I had taken a uh, test for the post office. Because I figured if I got out in 60, there's no jobs out there. And my father always told me, he said, get a civil service job, you ain't going to make a lot of money, he says, but then in 30 years or so you'll have at least a pension coming to you. So if you want to ask me any questions so, after that. Uh, you had done 10 years active duty. Actually about 11. 11 years active duty. Right. Did you get any medals for like the invasion in China or anything like that? Did you, did no, you all I got was the Korean medal, mm -hmm. the United Nations medal, Navy Occupation, Good Conduct, and National Defense Medal. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, oh, I guess in late, no, it was about February or February or uh, March, I joined the reserve. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go back to the regulars, but I enjoyed the job in the post office. Mm -hmm. So I joined the reserves. <coughs> and the thing was, when I was on a carrier, and it shows you how, everything comes full circle. When I was on the carriers, we used to laugh at the guys who were on tin cans, destroy them. When we were in the North Atlantic, we used to watch these tin cans go straight up in the air, come down, and they would lay on their side and take water down the stack and come back upright and lay down on the other side. And the fantail would either go down or go up. So we used to laugh at them. Now I'm in the reserves. Don't you know my first reserve two-week cruise is on a tin can out of Brooklyn, New York? I thought I'd die. What I was laughing at before was yeah. happening now to me. It's happening to you, yeah. <laughs> Not so good. And the uh, old reserve cans used to go to work and were built back in 38 or 39. Mm -hmm. There were times that we were only on there like a weekend. We do a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. or we do a two-week cruise, which was my first two-week cruise. There was very seldom hot water. If you took a shower, it was like a, you go in, you wet down, soap, and you go where and get a GI shower. I took the night shift. I stayed down overnight, and I was a baker. I'll give you a funny story. <laughs> I go to work and work in nights. And we were feeding about 220, about 220 guys. So I called up the officer on the deck, and I sit down. This is about 12 o'clock at night. The bed rats. Yeah. Bed rats. So I says, uh, I'm going to bake some pies. I said, now, you go to work, and you're going to keep this thing on an even keel. <laughs> I said, you're not going to fight games here. Go left and right, up and down. I said, if I load up this oven with about 20 or 30 pies, you ain't going to go to work and do nothing like this, right? He says, don't worry about it. He says, we're going to be very calm. We're going to go straight a line. No problem. I loaded up the oven. They switched watch. One come off at midnight, another guy comes on. The guy that comes on at midnight decides he's going to play a little GQ and go to work and do a little zigzags and everything. Lo and behold, he starts his stuff and here goes these ovens. They're shaking like hell. First thing you know, the doors pop open and all these pies are flying out. I got blueberries on the overhead. I got apples all over the bulkheads. I, I just quit. I, I left it there and I went down to my rack and went to bed. But that was a, you know, as I say, the funny stories and how things come full circle on me. So, 25 years uh, later, I went in in the 60s, 
25 years, 25, yeah, I got out in the for 24 years, 24 years later. I retired from the reserve. So you were in the reserve all that time, 24 years? Yes, active duty, you know, active reserve. Right, active reserve. And uh, the only reason I got out was Mr. Reagan decided in 1984, anybody that had 30 or more in had to get out. Why, I don't know. But that's what happened. Put me you going for E7, you going for chief, or you were? I made chief four, six times. And that's where the Navy started changing. I don't know about the other branches of service. Even though I made chief, because I didn't have no community service, mm -hmm. you can get the highest mark on a test. Mm -hmm. If you wasn't involved, this is the reserves now. Mm -hmm. If you wasn't a reserve with the Boy Scouts, United Way, mm -hmm. the Red Cross, a blood drive, in other words, community service, right. they wouldn't even look at that test. Mm -hmm. Even though that you had, we'll say a 4-0, mm -hmm. which never happened. Right. If you average a 3-5, 3-7, it just got to the point that you didn't even want to take the test no more. Mm -hmm. You keep taking them. Mm -hmm. And I used to tell them when I went before the board, I'm working full time in a post office. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was working overnight. I worked at 5 to 1.30, 5 a.m. You know. mm -hmm. And I said, if you think I'm going to go out there and play little league ball, or I'm going to go for the Red Cross running around for a blood drive, I just can't do it. So they said, well, then you can't make chief. Mm -hmm. So I retired as first class. When you were uh, in Korea, though, did you uh, have to keep in touch with your family? I didn't because my family and I didn't get along. Yeah. It was uh, so you no know, contact. Did you get any, any USO shows or anything like that? No. You, you strictly on Our movies? entertainment was mostly movies at night on board ship. Right. We put movies on in the hangar deck. Mm -hmm. There was two movies. One was 1800 and the other one was around 20, 2030. Right. Two shows at the watches. That was the only entertainment we had. Yeah. And the difference in Navy Child, too, was a whole new experience for us, for me, anyway. We went to work, and uh, when I first went in in 49, mm -hmm. you could lay in your rack at night or in the morning, reveling, mm -hmm. and tell by the aroma from the galley what was in the galley for mm -hmm. you to have for breakfast. Example. One of the big meals was beans and cornbread. Mm -hmm. You could smell the beans, you could smell the cornbread. Another one was SOS, <laughs> okay? That you would cipher down. You went from that experience to when I finished up down in Willow Grove, I went down there in 72. Everything was like outside. It was a breakfast to order. <laughs> We were feeding 500 men, and you had eggs, hotcakes, French toast, home fries, bacon, sausage, yeah, plus your pastry. You get your choice. You come to a chow line just like you went to a diner. Mm -hmm. You tell them what you want. One man worked the grill, and if you can imagine one man working a grill, feeding 500 to water. Mm -hmm. But that was the difference of the chow. You went from the aroma of the galley. This was a land galley, though. Right. Yeah, but this is a board ship now, too, I understand, mm -hmm. that they've done the same thing. Your super carriers go to work and have three mess halls and three galleys. One is kept open 24-7. Mm -hmm. That's because of the planes at night right. Right. and the mid-watch and all that. Okay, okay so uh, okay, if you had gotten off of active duty, did you take any... If, did you take any courses or anything with the GI Bill? No. Or anything like that? You just went to work for the Postal Service? Right. And then worked straight through with that. Okay. So it was, uh, do you have any friends that you, any relationships from back in Korea or? No, not really. I had one guy that joined uh, joined up in 56 and we be almost came like brothers. We were together for mm -hmm. almost 50 years. His uh, children are my godchildren. So, uh, I've seen them born, I've seen them raised, and I've seen them married. Mm -hmm. I have children of their own. Yeah. That goes on. So did your, uh, your experience in the military, did it influence your, any of your thinking about anything that came on later on in life, as a, you acted as a guide for you? 
as a good for me? I think it taught me responsibility and discipline. And I feel today, as I felt many times before, the military is the greatest thing in the world. I think that every individual should do at least two years mm -hmm. to accept the responsibility and discipline, as I say, mm -hmm. that I think everybody should mm -hmm. have. As far as veterans organization, are you with the American Legion? Are you with the VFW also? I joined the American Legion. I joined the Veterans Forum Wars. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I joined both organizations back in 1960 mm -hmm. when I got out of the regular Navy. And I've been involved with the baseball programs, mm -hmm. Memorial Day, Veterans Day. And in this post here, post 72, we have a funeral detail and an honor guard takes part in all military funerals, which all veterans get and are entitled to. I think that uh, whatever can be done for the veterans are being mm -hmm. done through these organizations. Mm -hmm. Without these organizations, yeah. there will be no help of appreciated or given to them mm -hmm. or fed to them right. by telling them what they can, are entitled to, what they should be getting, which we don't get today. Mm -hmm. It's a shame that more and more veterans' benefits have eroded. Mm -hmm. The hospitals are in terrible shape. I have no concept but what's going to happen to the guys that come back from Iraq? Mm -hmm. I saw it during Desert Storm, Nam, mm -hmm. how many years they had to fight to get it. Mm -hmm. And Korea was the forgotten war. Mm -hmm. It took them many years for us right. to be recognized, mm -hmm. along with other veterans right. of my era. And it's really a shame. I have no idea where the future is as far as veterans' benefits, organizations, mm -hmm. A lot of uh, posts, unfortunately, are being maintained by senior citizens. Mm -hmm. People that have worked in a post for 20, 30, 40 mm -hmm. years, maybe more. And the young people, like yourself, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be in your hands that uh, your people of the Gulf War, Iraq, Nam, mm -hmm. your people are going to have to carry this on. Mm -hmm. right. Any other, uh, anything else you'd like to say about this or closing statements? Well, the reserves to me was, I used to laugh at a reserve when I was in a regular. Mm -hmm. But I found that they were the backbone mm -hmm. of the regulars. Mm -hmm. And that the training and the responsibility that goes with it mm -hmm. is a great thing. It carries on the tradition. Mm -hmm of your individual service. I don't care what branch. Mm -hmm. And today is a prime example. Yeah. Just, just about to say. Yeah. Without the reserves, yeah. this country is so bare as mm -hmm. far as regulars. Mm -hmm. I read in the paper that recruitment is 20, 30, 40 percent below. Mm -hmm. Where it's going to come from, whether the draft has to come back. But uh, there's got to be an answer somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be up to the various veterans organizations, I imagine, mm. to keep pushing. Okay, then, Bill. Thank you very much. No problem.